The public beta for iOS 17 is out now and although this isn't the biggest update we have seen, there are some big new features Apple has presented rather quickly in the WWDC segment on iOS 17. Some small but long missing features weren't even mentioned and it looks like some of them are even neglected by YouTube videos presenting what is new in iOS 17. So here's me focusing on what great but often overlooked and unmentioned productivity features are coming to iOS 17, probably in September. This one was driving me nuts for years. As an avid user of Apple Mail on all platforms who still maintains a somewhat deep nested structure of folders, especially for client mails, filing mails was a pain in the rear. You had to scroll endlessly to get to the right folder, but no more. Apple has finally included what other apps like Airmail had for years. You can search for folders and then move to dialog. This makes moving mail so much quicker. Honestly, for me, this one is the best update for Apple Mail just with this one feature alone. As far as Apple Notes has come, there is one feature from the granddaddy of note taking apps called Evernote that they did not replicate note linking. Now, finally, this gets introduced with iOS 17 so that you can easily link notes together. There are two ways to do it. First, via the context menu and then add link. This option was there all the time, but you could only insert external URLs. Now you can search for the title of another note and insert an internal link. Also, you can decide whether you want to use the note title for the link or choose another title. The second, and in my opinion, more powerful option is via the keyboard. You enter two greater than signs and you will be presented with a list of the last changed notes. But you are not limited to these. If you just start typing anything following the two greater than signs, you will get a list of notes which include the text somewhere in the title. Also, with this method, you can quickly create a new note which will be placed in the current folder. Creating a new note is not possible with the first option via the add link menu. Once you have a link, tapping it will bring you to the link note and long tapping on it will give you a preview. Also, with a long tap menu, you can copy the link, edit it or remove it. Editing allows you to select a different link title. Although Apple Notes is far from the linking capabilities of more advanced apps like Obsidian, Notion, Roam or Craft, it is a step in the right direction. I hope that they will improve upon this further. Speaking about PDFs, using PDFs in Apple Notes has also been dramatically improved. In Notes, you can now show the page thumbnails above the PDF in Apple Notes. Also, you can easily scroll through the PDF in Apple Notes without needing to go into the PDF first. You can even now highlight and add notes to the PDF within Apple Notes. And you get this new three dot indicator for further actions in Apple Notes. Here you can view, rename, copy, share and delete the file as well as select how you want to view the PDF within Apple Notes. Small as an icon, medium for small pages or large for size you can work in Notes directly. And with a thumbnail overview you can drag individual pages here to reorder them or drag them outside the PDF to create a copy of that single page. Remind us now added new ways of structuring your lists. First, you can define a list as a shopping list. This will put items you enter into automatic generated sections, which might make your shopping more efficient. Of course, with a drag and drop you can change this categorization and you can enter your own categories or rename the current ones. For this, you use the three dot menu in the top right and there you can manage your sections. The same mechanism of grouping items together is now also available for each list and even your own created smart lists. You can add sections and drag items under it. You can then collapse and expand these sections. This is especially useful for separating tasks in lists which belongs to a different stage or are depending on a context. Since you can also add these sections to your own smart lists but not the default smart lists like today or scheduled. As an example, I created a smart list for today called Today Smart where as a filter I set the date to today and include overdue items. In this smart list I then can add sections using the three dot menu and place my tasks for today into sections which makes sense for me. I use this for creating blocks of tasks which belong together for that day although they might stay in separate lists. I really like this addition to reminders. As a bonus you now can also view these sections as columns so that you can also use them in a traditional Kanban board style. A feature I really missed from OmniFocus is the ability to separate the due date from the start date. While Apple hasn't copied OmniFocus implementation, it has come up with a great solution. You can now set an early reminder for any task. You can select one or two days or weeks or even one, three or six months in advance. And under custom, you can individually select how many days, weeks, months or even hours or minutes before the reminder time you want to be reminded about this task. 
Now I can set a task with a due date and remind myself two days prior. The reminder will still be sorted in the schedule view under its final reminder date and you will only get a notification of that reminder but it will not automatically appear in the today view. Although I find OmniFocus implementation better, this is still a great addition. PDF handling got a major update with iOS 17. Now through machine learning forms will be recognized automatically and finding them on an iPad or iPhone is now super easy. And adding a signature has now also come to iOS and iPadOS. I used the built-in PDF capabilities on my iPad already for most PDF tasks and now it added nearly everything I need. The only thing I wish they would add is adding comments without highlighting a passage. Maybe next year. By the way, if you want to learn more what crazy stuff you can already do with PDFs on an iPad, watch my video Unlock the Secrets of the Files app. You might be amazed about the hidden potential you already have with iOS 16. iOS 17 will introduce a new pencil palette. It is currently available in Apple Notes, in Freeform, in PDFs, in Apple Mail, and I guess it will be available to all apps, including Apple's own Pages, Numbers and Keynote at release date. This new palette now includes a ruler, yes! Even now for Freeform, where I really missed it. A watercolor brush and a new fountain pen, which makes even my ugly handwriting look elegant. Sort of. Users of apps like GoodNotes have these for years, but now you get it system-wide. Safari now allows you to create profiles so that you can separate your work from your personal browsing. This makes a lot of sense for us busy professionals, right? Hailed by Greg Federighi, you can now set multiple timers. You can not only set multiple timers, but you can give them descriptive names. So yeah. We really live in an age of wonders. Generally speaking, autocorrect has become way better in iOS 17 and now you get a new visual indication within the text itself. So if you are like me and you aren't looking at the keyboard while typing, you get this nice gray indication when iOS predicted a word and you can just press the spacebar to select the selection or ignore it and keep on typing. All in all, I really love this for typing on the iPhone a lot. Password sharing. If you use Apple's password solution, and you should if you have no other solution like 1Password, you now can share your password on an individual password basis or with selected members of your family. For this, you create a group, invite people to it, and then move passwords into this group. It is a bit similar to sharing your photos with your family since iOS 16. Well, two features I'm really looking forward to, which currently aren't working, at least not in Germany on my network, are transcriptions of audio messages and voicemail and the ability to leave a video or audio message when calling someone on FaceTime. As soon as that is available to me, I will report about that here. These are my top changes in iOS 17 for productivity. What are you really looking forward to in iOS 17? Drop me a comment below. If you liked this video, please smack the like and subscribe button. And if you want to know more about a hidden game changer for Apple Mail, which by default is off and you can change your productivity immensely, jump to this next video. Okay, that's it for now. See you in the next video. Bye.